My name is Michael Hahn, and I'm the vice president here at our, our foodie company. And we provide manufacturers factory automation and machine vision solutions. Now, we've been doing this over 18 years, and we've got over 7,000 machine vision solutions throughout uh, the globe. And that's anywhere from meat processing plants to inspecting parts and aircraft engines. We have over a quarter of a million dollars in vision cameras, lighting, and optics. And it takes the right combination of those three to come up with a solution that is viable uh, for uh, a customer's environment and to solve the customer's uh, needs. If we're doing precision measurement on a semiconductor part, or if we're just looking to make sure uh, labels and uh, the right labels are on a consumable good. So when you're in the uh, consumable good uh, side of things, uh, and, um, and we work uh, a lot in that area, we find ourselves uh, working in the plastics side of things. And uh, blow molders and preform and injection uh, molding uh, as well. And so we've basically developed a lot of vertical market uh, solutions. Uh, the KMV EyeSight system is, is one of them for blow molding and preform inspection. So to make sure that containers have the right labels, uh, no contamination, uh, no holes, uh, that the uh, opening is correct, that when they put a cap on it, it will fit correctly. If they put liquids into it, that it will um, fill correctly and not leak all over the place. And so our systems inspect all sorts of different uh, measurements and attribute checks that are kind of standard in the uh, plastics, bone mold, and preform industry. The major car companies have uh, stated publicly that they want a 2D code or some sort of direct part mark on almost all uh, parts that go into a car. There are three main reasons why manufacturers want to have that direct part marking. The first one is monitor process control. And the second reason is airproofing. And then of course the big one is just minimize rejects and recalls. But we've seen in the last year or two a new uh, breed of robotics uh, classified as the adaptive collaborative robots. Now companies like Amazon and Google are putting in large venture capital into these types of robots. The main points is that they are easy to use, they can work next to anyone, and they're safe, and then they're inexpensive. Basically, uh, the adaptive collaborative robot works well by just showing him what to do pick up a part here, uh, place it in a box, and you know, move the box off. Well, if you had a Baxter, maybe you could have one person tending two or three machines. The Graco vibrating table will present a number of different parts to the vision-guided robot. The robot will pick all the parts within its field of view. Once it's done, it'll just rotate, uh, vibrate and rotate some more parts underneath the field of view. Uh, this way, all the operator has to do is just make sure that the hopper is full and it doesn't even have to be of just one part for picking up multiple parts uh, for a sub-assembly. Or if today we're running, running one particular project and tomorrow we might be running a different project. We have four criteria. Is this solution going to help our customer stay competitive, increase their profitability, uh, reduce their risk, and make their life easier. We have a saying here, it's not the big that eat the small, it's the fast that eat the slow. Uh, so we basically bring innovative products and solutions to the companies that want to stay innovative.